now we're going to dive into um, exactly how we do that. So remember, we're starting with that Facebook group. And then we're going to bring them through a delivery system and four pieces of content, four letters. Think of the content as being letters that you're going to write to your perfect person, one to one. And the, the actual thing that you're going to deliver those letters in can vary. There are all kinds of different ways that you can do it. So I have a few of those listed right here. So to get your, your filter, to create your filter message, your filter content, you can pull people from the Facebook group, your Facebook profile, your Facebook page, your, your Facebook ad, Instagram, Instagram ad. Um, they're all kind of different ways to do it. And I'm gonna talk about exactly what that message would be in just a minute. And then that first filter piece is that you're talking about what you love. It is about what you love and you're going to share what it is that you love. You're going to give an overview of why you're doing that content. And then you're going to use either Facebook Messenger, personal email, Instagram direct message, or email service provider if you're doing your whole list. So those first three are one-to-one. -one. The email service provider is only if you already have an email list and you're gonna send it to your whole list. So there are lots of different delivery systems that you can choose to use. There's not one that's right and one that's wrong. It's what you have access to right now. That's the important part. I don't want you to struggle with getting a Facebook business page up and running yet. I don't want you to struggle with getting an Instagram account up, up and running. Doesn't matter how many followers you have on either of those things. You, if you have followers on there already, great. Then you can use those. If you have an email list already, great. You can use those. But you don't have to have any of the above in order for it to work. It goes back to the customer journey that you're going to be bringing them along that customer journey so that you're going to start in the Facebook group. So here's how you do that. Let's skip ahead here a little bit. In that Facebook group, you're going to interact. And fantastic if you can interact as your Facebook business page, but it's fine to do it as your personal profile. You're going to interact. You're going to make meaningful, engaging posts you're gonna ask questions, you're gonna become a conversation starter. Even better if you become a visual storyteller and you start by sharing photographs and you wait and see if it's gonna be okay for you to share your paintings. But when you share your paintings, you're not gonna be doing it in a promotional way. So if I were gonna be doing this in that coastal Georgia living group, I would start with sharing photographs of the Savannah Wildlife Refuge, of the places I've painted, actually the, the scenes that I painted. I would share Tybee. I would share Tybee Beach. I would share the marshes behind Tybee. Um, uh, I would share the creeks. I would share the marshes. I would share Fort Pulaski. All of those landscapes in photographs. And I would write about why I thought they were just so fascinating doesn't have to be long form, it can be fairly shorter posts, but I'm gonna do it in a way that invites conversation, call those conversation starters. I'm gonna ask questions, and one of those questions might be, I might post a photo of the beach and I might say, who loves it when they've got salt on their skin <laughs> or when there's salt in the air? People love to respond to questions like that. Um, answer with a GIF or answer with emojis. It gets people engaged with the, the post. Right now people are bored and they're scrolling through their Facebook feed all the time. And they will answer those kind of conversation starters 
much faster than they will things that are cut and dry and not engaging. Keep those senses going in there. So think about um, some of those beliefs, some of those things that people do, some of those things that people say that are back on your empathy map. And you're looking for people who say those kinds of things. So people who love the, the beach would be people who love Tybee. What, they're more comfortable with flip-flops on than with fancy shoes. So one question might be, heads up, who, who's more comfortable with flip-flops on than me? I mean, than the fancy shoes. And it, you need to word it a little bit better than that. Um, and people will say yes. Or share a photo of your flip-flops if you're more comfortable wearing those than dress shoes. Um, share a photo of your favorite beach. Ask people to share things. It gets enormous engagement. So I did this, and I'll show y'all what I did. I did this in a Facebook group not too long ago, because I'm prospecting again for one of my classes. So I did it in the painter in you. So here is the post I did. And let me share my screen so y'all can see it. It'd be even better if I joined with my Facebook page. I don't think you can do that. So I did a conversation starter. Notice I don't even have a fancy photo here. So this is in a Facebook group for people who paint. And I posted in there and asked, what's the last photo you took of your painting? And I want y'all to look at how many people responded. 744 people responded with photographs of their last painting. Yeah, Michelle, <laughs> you did too? Yeah, um, a lot of people did. And one of the things that I did to encourage people I already knew to comment was I tagged them. So I tagged some people that I knew were in the group that I'm already friends with and they shared, but it got right now, it's at almost 750 comments. So here would be the next step. I have gotten comments on there now. And so one of the things that I want to do is, and I did do this, I think already, is go back in and find 10 people who are my perfect people. 10 people who would be really great candidates for either my paid membership or Composition, Color, and Light, my course, and comment on their painting and leave a comment start a conversation, ask them a question, begin to start a relationship. And then after that, I'm actually gonna go in there and search for any posts that they've made, those 10 people I've commented on, and I'm gonna start commenting on their posts so that I'm encouraging a conversation and a relationship because I'm prospecting. And then once I've done that enough, and I'm building up a relationship, I might even go comment on their Facebook page if they've got one or on their personal profile if it's a public image and say how much I love a, per a particular painting and ask them a question. When it gets to the point that we're not just talking anymore and I think it might be time to ask them for a date, then I'm gonna friend them. So that means I'm gonna send that person a friend request. Don't do it until you have commented and created a back and forth conversation. This is how you get them out of the group. This is how you start to filter them, is you send them a friend request. So you've interacted with them and you send them a friend request. Now, you can do this whole promotion in a week. It doesn't have to take forever. If you wanna make money from your art, you have to spend about as much time promoting as you do painting, because that's how much it takes to run a business, whether it's a fiscal business, in person or online. 
So you got to devote some time to it. But a lot of this can happen while you're binging Netflix. So you can make comments and you can interact with people while you're binging Netflix. I don't do a lot of mindless Facebook and Instagram. I'm not on there just scrolling for fun, making comments about what I ate for dinner. When I'm on those social media platforms, I'm there on a mission. So I don't spend huge amounts of time on there. And I think it took me maybe 10 minutes to that day that I made those posts. And I made that post in three groups, slightly different wording, but I posted it into three groups. And then I went back and commented. And I'm gonna go back and do that a couple of times. It might take me a grand total over a few days of about ooh, 45 minutes, maybe. So it doesn't have to be huge amounts of time. So I'm making friends online and I'm interacting with them and then I'm friending them. And actually a lot of people from those posts sent me friend request, requests. I didn't have to do it. They sent it to me. So people like it when you put engaging stuff on there and then they want to get to know who you are. So you send friend requests. It doesn't have to take that many. You just want to start cultivating a relationship. Do you see how this is really one-on-one? -on -one? And here's one reason it works. Do you think most of the people who have an online art business do this? Yes or no? The answer is no, they don't. What most people do, and this is why you'll stand out and you'll head, your head will be up here and everybody else is gonna be here down below at the grass level. The reason it works is because what most people do is they put their work on a website, they put their work on Facebook, they post it to Instagram, and then they wait. And they wait. And they check their watch. I'm supposed to be having some sales now. And they wait because they're relying on hope marketing. They're not building relationships. They're not out there creating any meaningful content. They're not engaging. They're not interacting and they don't make any sales. So you're going to stand out because you do that. They might have 10,000 followers on their Facebook page. They might have 10,000 people on their email list. They won't make as many sales because they're not interacting. A small list, a small pocket of people who are perfect clients will be way better than a big old email list and a lot of followers that people have just run ads to get, basically bought the people. So if you're using your business page, you're still engaging them, but what you're gonna do, you have two options there. You can friend, send them a friend request from your personal profile, or you can send them a Facebook message inviting them to like your page. And if they like your page, then you can begin messaging back and forth with them. So I think it's really good actually to use your personal profile and you don't need to worry too much about the business page yet. So that is exactly how I, I did it. I'm just growing people on there for um, open, sending them to the page to join those two offers that I have out there. But you can do this completely from your personal profile. It doesn't have to involve a Facebook page at all. So if you're in that group as your personal profile, send friend requests. Keep it all in your personal profile. Um, keep it all there. So uh, I don't do too much inviting to like my page. I did when I was getting it started 10, 12 years ago, but I don't do that very often now. That example was to find students, but you can do the same thing when you're looking for collectors. So if I'm in the Georgia Coastal Living Facebook group, I could use that exact same little, you know, Facebook when you type a, a post and it only has a few sentences in it, it gives you the option to put a background in on it. People love those things. So the question I might ask in the Georgia Coastal Living one is, um, who wears flip-flops more than dress shoes? Or who prefers wearing flip-flops more than dress shoes? 
share a photo of your flip-flops. It would do the same thing because then I'm going to get people, I'm going to know that the people who respond to that with a photo of their flip-flops are going to love the beach and I'm going to start interacting with them and I'm going to start making friends with them. So yes, you can only have 5,000 personal friends. It does not have anything to do with Facebook likes. You can have an unlimited number of likes on your Facebook page. The 5,000 is only for your personal profile. So, and it'll be a while before you hit 5,000 personal on your personal profile. So I have 24,000 on my Facebook page. So you're not limited there at all. I have friends that have 100,000 on there or a million. So you're not limited on your business page at all. Not one little bit. So prospect with your friends list. Prospect with your friends list. Um, now the stalker thing. It would be stalking if you weren't building real relationships, but you need to think of this as a friendship and a relationship that you're building. You're prospecting for potential ideal clients. If you're, it's stalking if you have bad ulterior motives. You're not going to promote to them until you find out they're really your perfect person. So don't send them stuff until you find they're, that you find out they're really your perfect person. It's a more authentic way to find, as, as Michelle says, it's an authentic way to find folks who love what you do. There are probably a lot of them on your, your personal profile already, and that's a great place to get started. So, um, yeah. Now there's some stalker people out there and you just winnow them out. If you start getting close to 5,000 on your personal profile, 5,000 friends, friends are what's on your personal profile, not likes. So friends on your personal profile are limited to 5,000. I've been on Facebook since they opened it up to beyond the college level, student level. I don't have 5,000 friends yet, and I pretty much accept almost everybody. Not all, but I accept a lot of them. I filter people out periodically. So if they are not in alignment with my perfect people, and if they're not people that I think are going to care about the things that I love, I quietly unfriend them because I want to keep my list my, my people who are my friends a little cleaner. I try not to post anything on my Facebook personal profile that I wouldn't share on my Facebook page. So I don't start, try not to start arguments on there. I try not to share stuff that is a hot button topic because that's not what I use Facebook for. So I take that on to private stuff. So there's your personal profile and your business page, two entirely different things. So when we're in Facebook, right now I am acting as my personal profile. I'm on my personal profile. This is, this is my personal timeline. So this is the latest stuff from the people that I've interacted with the most that I'm friends with, the latest posts from pages that I've liked as my personal profile. And then here is my actual profile. This is me and it's my personal stuff. There's a link there to my Facebook page, but this is my profile. And that's where I post silly things like raccoons are saddle breaking feral hogs and riding them into battle against the possums because I thought that was hilarious. The people who see this, this is a public post. The people who see this are anybody that I'm friends with. And now I want y'all to think for just a minute. Do you think this might tie into some of my perfect people? Just maybe a little bit. So I posted something that is humor that's particular to Southerners. A friend of mine shared it. 
and another a friend of mine I grew up with. And it's literally a meme that somebody else shared. It came from somebody else's personal profile. It came from one of their animal cams in their yard. This is truth. This is not a, a fake photo. It's not something that was photoshopped. There apparently was some sort of weird stuff going on. And you have a raccoon there riding a feral hog. And over on the right are two possums. So it is the, the raccoon saddle breaking the feral hog and then riding it into battle against the possums. You see weird stuff in the woods. Um, probably the raccoon dropped onto the hog's back. So yes, we do have huge feral hogs. They're hogs, some of them are native and some of them are ones that got loose going into the woods. So anybody who loves Southern culture, they're going, oh, she's my girl. Or I'm gonna watch to see if she posts any more funny humorous stuff about those of us in the South. So this is just a, a funny that I shared on my personal profile. This is my personal profile. So my, my own page is Mary Gilkerson Art. This is my page. That's the difference. This is my business page. And people can like it. If you look at it as a visitor, people get a chance to like it if they haven't liked it already. So that's the difference. So you want to share stuff on your personal profile that also begins to filter those people over to your, your business page. The profile equals personal, the page equals business. Um, yes, you can see who likes your page, but you can't just randomly send them a message because Facebook has real guidelines around that. So that's why I'm saying you wanna use Messenger as your personal profile. So it really, Facebook has really tight restrictions around what you do with your Facebook Messenger from your business page. So it takes a roundabout way to get to see who has liked your page, but if I remember right, it's under community. Take it a second to switch over. And then you can see your fans. So you can see all of the, the people who are friends with me who like my page. You can see likes. Now I can message those people because they're friends of, I'm friends with them. But you can't just randomly message people who've liked your page. So I wouldn't get too hung up on checking who's liked your page already. But you don't really need to worry too much about the page right now. Just about the personal profile. And you don't have to make it all fancy pants. I haven't changed that image in probably four years. I need to but you want to start sharing stuff that has to do with the bigger picture of what you're doing. So this one I thought was just funny, Southern culture. This one was my family because of the, the island where my family's from had damage in the tornadoes not too long ago. And then I share little bits and pieces that are slice of life that give people a little bit of insight into my immediate family. So that's me and my daughter, son-in-law and granddaughter on their front porch. On Easter. So sharing baby photos is always a good thing. Puppy photos, kitten photos, things like that. So you can always share that kind of stuff. You cannot have two profiles. I know people who do it, but it violates Facebook terms of service. And when you do that, you run the risk of Facebook kicking you off. I know people that's happened to. So if you've got a second profile, get rid of it and get rid of it now. Because if you start using Facebook to advertise and you've got multiple personal profiles, you can have your ad account shut down and all the work you put into it goes away. So don't do that. One personal profile. Get rid of the rest of them. Facebook cracks down on that periodically and they will shut you down. Don't do that. It's a really, really, really bad thing. If you've got multiple personal profiles, 
and you need them for some reason, you can easily convert one of them to a page. And then everybody who's friends with you on that personal profile becomes a follower on the page. They've liked the page. And then you can just interact with them. You can have as many pages as you want. I have about 10. No, only one of them is really very active. So you can have as many as you want. And one of the best things you can do with your page is treat it like it's a personal one and treat it and all the people who interact with you as if they're friends, which means post some of the personal stuff. Um, I think I shared the photo of my daughter and granddaughter and son-in-law onto my, my Facebook page. If I didn't, I need to, um, because that lets people feel like they're part of your friend's circle of your family. So I probably interact more on my page than I do on my profile. It's really important to do that. And you want to make sure, as Sarah Sumner says, make sure and answer any questions. Now, if you start getting 750 comments, you're not gonna be able to answer all of them, but scroll through, look for the people who are your perfect people and make sure you answer those and keep answering as many as you can. You can go back and keep making answers the next day, the next week, the next year, and it throws that post back up into the people who've liked it and commented. It's timeline, they see it again. So it keeps your stuff fresh. So yeah, it's a really good thing to do. It doesn't matter if you're using a different email address, Facebook can track you down, don't do that. So switch it over to a business page and or a professional page and you'll be 100% better off. 100% better off, one profile per person. And the reason you wanna be careful about that again is because if you start advertising on Facebook, and I think you should, um, if you've got multiple profiles, Facebook's going to get mad and Facebook will shut you down and they don't have second chances. You have to grovel a lot to get it back if you lose it. So you don't want to get in that position. Um, it's a really unfortunate one. So cl everybody clear on how you interact with the people in the groups that you want to share conversation starters. You want to ask questions that I think of as filtering questions because you're wanting to filter out the green people who are not your perfect people and pull in those pink people who are your perfect people. So everything you post in those groups, be very intentional. Don't just post to post, post stuff that's filtering stuff, filtering content. Everybody with me on that one? Awesome. And start friending those people. And when you friend them, then you can start sending your first piece of content, okay?